It's been almost a year to the day since God of War Ragnarok was first teased, and now we finally have the first real look at what Kratos and his growing boy Atreus will be facing in this sequel. There's a lot to take in, including some new and familiar faces, so let's slow it down to check out some of the bigger reveals from this trailer. Just like the previous game foreshadowed, it seems Fimble Winter is upon the duo, one of the events leading up to the mythical War of the Gods called Ragnarok. Kratos seems very keen to stay out of it, unlike his son Atreus, who has grown slightly since we last saw him. He's even carrying a deer he hunted all by himself, having learned a lot from the lessons he was taught in 2018's God of War. In these early wintry scenes, Kratos seems to be missing the Blades of Chaos, or perhaps left them at home, but we'll see them again soon enough. Atreus is adamant on learning more about Ragnarok, and more importantly, his heritage and what it means to be Loki, something Kratos knows cannot be good, as he seems to fear Atreus may turn into a god-killing powerhouse just like his old man. Of course, without the protective magic of Fae, the late mother of Atreus, some of the gods still have the pair in their sights, including Thor, voiced by Ryan Hurst, and a returning Freya, who can be seen attacking Kratos as they try to flee their home via sled. She even managed to put a huge gash in Kratos' shield, and looks to be one of the chief antagonists in this sequel. This attack appears to convince Kratos and Atreus, as well as the head of Mimir, that they need help, and set about finding the whereabouts of Tyr. If you recall from the previous game, Tyr built the big vault in the Lake of Nine, was instrumental in diplomacy between the different realms, helped Atreus' mom to hide the Realm of the Giants from Odin, and seems to be an all-around good guy, considering he's the Norse god of war. Odin wasn't very happy about the betrayal and being denied entry into Jotunheim, and had Tyr imprisoned. We get to see more of Kratos using sled dogs, sled wolves? as a means of transportation to cross a now-frozen Lake of Nine, and may become a new method to quickly traverse open areas. Later scenes show Kratos fighting on the frozen bridge leading to Tyr's temple, indicating it won't be easy to leave these lands behind. Speaking of open areas, we also get a look at what appears to be Ragnarok's much warmer version of the Lake of Nine, and presumably somewhere near where Tyr is being held. There look to be plenty of points of interest and watery paths to distant lands, similar to how the Lake of Nine was a hub area in the previous game. It's not yet clear if this Kratos is still in Midgard or another realm entirely. One of these spots is an honest-to-goodness town, with people, like this guy, who is apparently named Durlin and has a pet squid? We even get a reunion with the dwarven pair of smiths, Brock and Sindri, who look like they may return to help Kratos and Son bolster their weapons and armor. They also seem to have some branches growing in their home that look very similar to the world tree. Things start to get a bit more action-heavy as we see Kratos still has all of his signature moves, like the Leviathan Axe and Blades of Chaos, plus a few new moves like the ability to grapple up to ledges quickly. We even see what may be new variations of Kratos' collapsible shield, including a much thinner oval one during a shield bash. Even Atreus appears to have a new type of runic summon, hopping onto a charging mountain goat and crashing it into his opponents. There are a lot of new and returning enemies appearing in these quick segments, including the flying dark elves from Alfheim, Kratos kinda killed their king, centaurs, a giant alligator-like monster, and what appears to be soldiers from Asgard teleporting straight out of the rainbow-like Bifrost. This all leads up to Kratos and Atreus finding the still-alive Tyr, voiced by Ben Prendergast, and asking him to join their quest. Smells like a God of War team-up to me. Given his actions to uphold peace, we're not really sure if he'll be in the fighting mood, but he is a god, and he has mystical golden eyes that look a lot like Mimir's. That's gotta count for something. Finally, the trailer ends with the introduction of a new character, Angerboda, voiced by Leia de Leon Hayes, who is the last of the giants. In Norse mythology, Angerboda ends up being the mother to three of Loki's monster children who have a part to play in Ragnarok, like killing a lot of gods. However, God of War may have a different take on this lore, given that Kratos and Atreus are already allies with the world serpent Jormagundr. Still, it's safe to say that she will likely have an important part in Ragnarok, whatever that may be. What other gods are you hoping to see make an appearance in God of War Ragnarok? We're looking forward to getting into an eventual fistfight with the God of Thunder. 
In the meantime, for everything PlayStation and God of War related, stick with IGN. In moments of crisis, panic does nothing. Harness it. Let it serve you.